Well, congratulations for making it this far. Now we're going to get into some of the fun stuff, actually applying what you've learned uh, to s several pictures. We'll do three paintings and three sketch-like effects. How's that? So first we'll start with painting. So now let's get into the fun stuff, uh, taking an image uh, like this one here and making it into a portrait. First is to optimize the image, so anything we need to do, a little bit of straightening perhaps. I tend to do as much as I can of things like cropping and cloning in Photoshop rather than in uh, Topaz Studio because there are some known problems. So let's uh, kind of think about this like a Rembrandt or other portrait. Uh, cropping a little tighter. And then if the background is too busy, one of the things we can do, I'm going to duplicate the layer here, is go in and blur that background a little bit. And there's a variety of ways to do that. But one of the nicest ways is with a Topaz product, Mask AI. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to invoke it here. Filters, Topaz Labs, uh, Mask AI. And I'm going to pause while it's loading. And now that it's loaded, you can see that there's an AI mode and select subject for me. I tend to <coughs> have less problems using translucent or contrast. But let's see what it does when it says, you say select subject. And that gives us a pretty good uh, selection of uh, the top portion of her, but we're going to have to go into the uh, brush tool here, make sure it's set on blue, find a nice uh, size for your brush. The smaller it is to follow the edges, probably the better. Uh, the green is what we want to keep, and what I'm trying to do is isolate uh, my subject more. And what I'm aiming for is more detail in the face and uh, the outfit, and I want to blur a good portion of this background. Um, green is what's going to be saved, and red is what's going to be hidden. And so the red will be what we're going to be blurring. Here's a size adjustment, or you can use the right bracket to increase size. And I'm just going to say, to save all this, get the edge of her apron, and then click on Compute Mask. Again, I'm going to pause. And this is what it comes up with for a mask, which I think is pretty darn good, uh, without having to do anything else to refine that. I'm going to go to Background and choose Blur. And there you see how it's separating the subject from her background pretty nicely. I can increase that further or decrease it and just find where it is to taste so that we have a less distracting background when we paint. Here it is all the way blurred. What's nice about using this as opposed to uh, selecting the subject and blurring in other programs is that you don't have the bleeding of the subject into the blur of the background. A topic for another day. But I think I'm going to leave it about here and say apply with the composite, meaning take that blur over as well. Of course you had other choices like solid color. Now I may not want as much blur in the foreground, so I'm going to click on the mask. And that throws back in our shower and some detail in the floor. Now that I have that, I'm going to merge it down. And uh, here I've taken it into Topaz Studio, and I'm going to go to add a look. My uh, desire, and I've searched for Rembrandt here previously, which is one of them. We're going to modify whatever we get anyway. What I'm looking to do uh, is to get detail on the subject and less detail on the background. And you can see that this has done a fairly good job, but I'd like to get a little more detail and small brush in here. It's not bad. A little more detail in here. And some of that we're going to achieve just by masking a little bit to bring detail from the picture back in, from the photograph back in. But let's start uh, by seeing what impression settings were used for this. So first 
click on the word impression here. And you can see, and uh, here I've taken it into Topaz Studio 2. Uh, and I'm going to go to add a look. My uh, desire, and I've searched for Rembrandt here previously, which is one of them. We're going to modify whatever we get anyway. What I'm looking to do uh, is to get detail on the subject and less detail on the background. And as you can see that this has done a fairly good job, but I'd like to get a little more detail and small brush in here. It's not bad. A little more detail in here. And some of that we're going to achieve just by masking a little bit to bring detail from the picture back in, from the photograph back in. But let's start uh, by seeing what impression settings were used for this. So first click on the word impression here. And you can see that uh, they use type 6, which I'm not so sure is the best one for a Rembrandt-like portrait or for my own tastes. I'm going to go to type 3 for a sec and see if I can get this to look the way I want. So in order to get more detail, a couple of things that I do, go to high number of brush strokes, and you can see that that already has improved. I'm going to take the spill down. That's... Uh, going to give us less kind of less overlap uh, bleeding from one brush stroke into the other. We can always adjust it back up if we wish. Um, and I'm going to take the brush size down. Now you can see we're getting all sorts of uh, defects in the canvas coverage, even though the coverage is all the way at 100% and the painting progress is all the way at 100%. So quick solution for that is to go into texture, go down to where it says background type, and instead of letting canvas show through, we'll let a little bit of the photograph basically show through. And you can see that it's taken all that away, which allows me to play more with my brushes. Make that brush even smaller and play with things like paint opacity, brush volume, and try to get it to look a bit more realistic, less choppy. Let's see if a little bit of color pop comes in with color variation into her face. I think I like that. Playing with the stroke width and the stroke length. It's not all that different from the, the photograph now. A lot of realism with a bit of that nice light ref reflecting off the brush strokes. And if there's an area that... <clears throat> just tweaking a couple of things to my personal taste here. Um, if there's a couple of details that we'd like to be even better, we can always mask uh, and uh, <clears throat> take a, a black brush, or that would bring us all the way back to the photograph. But if we take just a gray brush and maybe paint over an eye, we get a little bit more of that showing through. So that's a nice little cheat to throw in there. Let's see how we're doing now. So now we have a lot of detail in here. It still has some brush stroke quality to it if we compare it to the original. That's the photograph. That's the painting. So just play as you learned. We can adjust anything we want here. I don't like smudge too swirly. Okay, um, so that's the first layer. And then as a second layer, I would stick with probably the same brush type. So we're using type 3. And uh, we could just re reapply Rembrandt here. And now what we're doing is going for the background to be rougher and so what we have to do is put a mask over our subject again. So I can take a, a black mask, and especially the areas that I'm most concerned about detail. Maybe a little blending of the two in other places. So Rembrandt was kind of a combination of realism with um, uh, 
a very fine impasto, so strong but very fine brush strokes. And if you want a little more of the rough stuff to show through, just make your mask a little less visible. And it, I like kind of the reflections that that's putting into her outfit. So I think about 50% works well on that. But you see her face is retaining detail. And again, we need to drop down and uh, look at our texture. Uh, Rembrandt did use uh, a technique that still canvas did show through. If you put your nose right up in, in the face of <laughs> one of his portraits, you'll see it. Uh, and he does do a lot of detail work on the outfits. The wealthy people who... <coughs> I gave him money to include them in his portraits or to just do a portrait, wanted to show off their riches as well. So uh, he did put effort into the detail of their garments and sometimes a few objects of theirs. Uh, same thing down here is we want to make sure we have some canvas showing through. I'm using canvas one. But you know what, we may need to, oh yeah, take the texture down. Same thing on the second impression is take the texture down, texture strength down. And you want those to match between the two areas. So you can see a rough detail here. We could even make it rougher by changing it from medium strokes to uh, low. Uh, but I like this. I like this a lot. So uh, if we zoom into uh, her face and arms a bit, this is 400%. You can see that we do have some paint strokes and textures throwing, showing through. Here's the original. And there's the paint strokes. Same thing if we look down at her sleeve. I like the exaggeration of light. We can influence that more with contrast, but I think it's fine the way it is, so I'm going to leave it alone. And her hands have enough detail in them. And yet the background has these rougher strokes. Let me come down to the floor. You can see them better. And this is pretty typical. Why waste effort and time? Plus, it pushes the viewer's eyes into the detail of the portrait. Another thing I might add is uh, chamois glaze. And do it part way here. Give it an old uh, fading glaze kind of look here. It also puts a bit of amber into the quality here. Lovely. Okay, so then accept that. It goes back into Photoshop. So let's uh, look at the before and the after. Let's zoom in. Let's take that same photograph and make something a little different. Uh, so same photograph, different look. Uh, again, in Impressionism, let's, instead of that Rembrandt Vermeer's kind of look that we had before, let's duplicate. And this time I'm not going to uh, take the background to blur. I'm going to leave it uh, and think along the lines of Auguste Renoir or Toulouse-Lautrec. Uh, with the flatter, simpler uh, look, simplified look. So let's go into Topaz Studio 2 and see how are we going to prepare it this time. So I'm thinking a little abstraction and then uh, paints with very little in the way of brush stroke showing. 
you something of a drier brush look. So here we have our same gal, our same docent in Scotland. And uh, I'm going to go into filters, abstraction. And what my goal is, is to simplify this to get us close to, that's about right. And then what I might do is put more contrast into the face. Uh, add a filter, precision contrast. And here first I might look at a mask, invert it, and then isolate the face with a white brush. And just say these areas of the eyes is where I want more contrast. Eyes, mouth, and then click on precision contrast and decide which ones give us the effect that we like. Go back to my mask, make sure that I'm not exaggerating the black eye kind of look. It's a little better. Uh, we could use the same mask and maybe use levels in a way by taking curves. Copy the mask. I'm using the right uh, click button to copy the mask and then to paste it. And then when I come into curves, I'm going to bring that black point. And you can see how that's bringing back some stark detail here. I might bring the white though over a bit. And let's make sure that that mask is also showing through on the left side, excuse me, her right side of the face. I guess it is just the way it is. Okay, now let's go in and uh, well, let's let's choose Renoir because I do believe he's in here, but I don't think it's right for that Moulin Rouge sort of Renoir or Toulouse Lautrec kind of look. Let's take a look, and see what we have. Yeah, so it's skipping some of the detail. We obviously need a better brush for uh, the docent versus the background. So we may do the same kind of thing. Let's see what happens if we come in and analyze which brush is being used. This one is. I'm thinking more along the lines of a dry media sort of brush and see what happens. That's looking better already for the look I want. I might go to high strokes, see what that looks like. I think it's going to be a matter of brush size a bit too. And definitely that's getting us closer. One thing that we may need to do is, again, get a mask and bring back a bit of the detail. So I'm going to start at 50% and just come over the eyes and the eyebrows. and maybe a bit of hand detail. And that does pretty well. I think we need more contrast. We'll come down to the contrast under lighting. That's doing a pretty good job. So here's a very different sort of look at 100% before and after. You know, there's a very different look from the Rembrandt, a simplified look. He 
Here is a landscape and uh, building uh, that I did a heavy oil on. This is the photograph from which it was taken. And this is the end result after putting the oils on it. I'll go through step by step what I did, but I'm not going to uh, take you through the, the tedium of all the settings. You've learned that already if you've been watching. So let's go back to the beginning here. <clears throat> this is the photograph, and uh, it's one of my favorite photographs that I've taken. Uh, probably should get rid of this signpost here, but uh, I spent a lot of time in the past working on this, and uh, I thought, you know what, we ought to throw a landscape into this uh, lecture. So let's uh, see what I first did was created in Topaz Studio to a fine brush setting, and this was, the, I think, next to last one that had the heavy edges. Um, and I changed some of the settings to a small brush size, but heavy, uh, heavier on the paint opacity, and uh, changed the um, paint opacity up relatively high. Plus, I did change the stroke width uh, to a narrower setting and the stroke length to a wider setting. Uh, so let's zoom in and you'll see what I got. So these are the strokes that I got out of that. Uh, this is part of that impasto sort of look with heavy edges of paint uh, surrounding the brush stroke. I did put a little bit of color variation in too uh, to add some uh, pop in uh, especially these highlighted areas uh, kind of to suggest the movement, uh, perhaps, or just the variation in the grasses. Um, and I think Studio 2 did a good job with this, as well as, this, I guess, my choice of settings. Um, kind of a, a cheat here, I, I excluded the sky and uh, did something different on that. Uh, I don't show the, what the fine brush did here. Um, I actually treated the sky differently, which is this next one, uh, where with a larger brush. So I masked the sky from this stuff, uh, this fine brush, and I used a larger brush with less opacity uh, to give me uh, a smoother sky. Otherwise, it had a lot of tiny brush strokes with uh, a lot of variation in it that was unattractive. So, just like we did with portraiture, a fine brush for where you want detail, uh, perhaps a medium brush in some other places, and a, a large brush. So this is just fine brush that Topaz is smart enough to know where to use the finest one and a little larger brush for these uh, big areas and uh, still very fine brush back in here on the horizon and then I made a larger brush for here. So then I added a little bit of highlight so I just painted on some peachy colored uh, You can barely see it here, but there's this peachy color stuff that I blurred uh, to uh, give me some nice warm highlights. And that one is on overlay mode, uh, which will brighten those highlights uh, from that light color. Uh, I like that. And then I stamped everything to a higher level. Uh, and then I used precision contrast. The reason for that, if we zoom in again on these brush strokes, 
is that I felt even with those high opacity settings, I wasn't getting the edge uh, sharpness that I wanted. So I applied some precision contrast and precision detail uh, to my taste. And now I'm getting uh, now I'm getting these finer brush strokes uh, with more detail in them, and you especially see it in the tall grass and the meadow a built a bit in the building side here. Uh, and that really screwed up my sky a little bit more. <laughs> so let me see if I can bring that down. Uh, you can see the sky. Now some people may like that. Um, it does definitely shows that it was painted. But I, I went back down to uh, a lower uh, level here, selected sky and duplicated it and then moved that layer up above my stamped layer uh, and that gave me a, a softer look. I could always blur that if I wanted to but I still wanted to preserve some brush stroke. Then this final layer is just my signature down below and that's it. Then we just uh, flatten the image and save away. So let's uh, zoom in again on uh, different parts. Let's zoom in on the barn end and uh, get that. You can see the brush strokes in the shingles and the side of the house with a little bit of color variation. Uh, the nice strong uh, brush strokes in the grasses, uh, all with that same setting that was used on the buildings. And even here on the edge of the trees, we still have some nice detail preserved. Amazing. Um, and then the sky separately <clears throat> is uh, a broader brush. Uh, the highlights, uh, I think this is just lovely. Okay, that's it.